Welcome, age of vintage society. I didn't have enough maturity for a leading man. I looked broad in the shoulders, much like a kid. The voice of Lloyd Bridges as he recalled his acting career journey back in the day. Energetic, creative and ambitious gentleman, he soon became a popular and talented leading man, with a remarkable versatility that transcended from the early gritty roles into comic performances amidst more than a half-century career life. Why did Lloyd Bridges get stuck in awful B pictures? Lloyd Bridges is one of those talents that always deliver. Once called to service in a career that he started, playing the tough guy role in mainly action movies. The name Lloyd Bridges always brings nostalgia for post-World War II thriller films for certain categories of movie lovers. The likes of Home of the Brave readily come to mind. If there's one remarkable thing about this wonderful talent, it's the dynamism and versatility that Bridges displayed as an actor during a productive career that spanned about 70 years. Conservatively assessed, Lloyd Bridges' career developed in what I choose to call different career stages. After a cursory look at his performance in the industry, it would be right to say that he got his greatest success in television shows. Although he played intently and regularly on stage and pulled through over 100 films, his television appearances in series such as Sea Hunt is one of the remarkable shows that fans remember him for today. Interpreting the character of Mike Nelson Bridges was featured as an underwater detective, a role he perfectly exhibited for about four years that the movie aired. Described by popular media as a tall, blonde and craggy-faced man, Lloyd Bridges was seen daring nature underwater, rising from the sea unharmed, after suffering and escaping sharks, shipwrecks and other dangers. I hear that the Sea Hunt show was interestingly more significant for Lloyd Bridges as it introduced two of his sons into the acting career. Recall that Bo and Jeff made their screen debut in that series. He is a remarkable American film, stage and television talent with a very busy career that fortunately never affected his family life. A happy father of four children he is. Bridges was succeeding alongside his kids because he set them up for what would become their movie fame in the industry. Talking about Lloyd Bridges would not be complete without a clear mention of his performances in High Noon, where he played a scheming deputy Harvey Pell, and the crazy air traffic regulator McCroskey in Airplane. Having raised a family of actors, Lloyd continued to act in his later years, appearing with each or both of his sons in movies and earning accolades. Interestingly, the 1986 teleplay Thanksgiving Promise was more like a family affair as it featured all the famous Bridges, father and his sons, and even apart for Dorothy, Lloyd's wife and grandson Jordan. Bridges had to struggle at the beginning of his career until things took a sharp, dramatic turn for good. Observers say he witnessed a career upswing around the 1980s. After the very interesting airplane production, Lloyd appeared to have found new favour in comic dramas, as he continued serving in that capacity. His firmness, talent and magnetism made him a choice performer for many generations of viewers, and here we are talking about this entertainment gem of a man. Lloyd Vanette Bridges Jr. was born in San Leandro, California in 1913 to Harriet Evelyn and Lloyd Vernette Bridges, an erudite hotel entrepreneur, reported to have once operated a movie theatre. His ancestors were traced to Kansas. Young Lloyd was very active in sports and academic pursuits at Petaluma High School, after which he studied a political science degree course at UCLA. A period he spent more time in the school theatre productions than the social science education he was supposed to be doing. An all-round activity guy at UCLA, Lloyd was linked to the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity. One of those who saw the creativity in him early is the Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright Sidney Howard. Sidney is one of those who encouraged young Lloyd Bridges to pursue his interest in acting, which he obeyed because not too long after he left the university, he connected himself to a touring production of The Taming of the Shrew, and moved with it across cities before anchoring in New York City. Well, like many self-made individuals, the road was not easy for young Lloyd Bridges and his promising talent. 
as he has to do a lot of odd jobs to support himself financially before things took shape. Those in the know said Lloyd was once a teacher from where he began recording dramas and novels for the American Foundation for the Blind, while also treading the boards in New York. Lloyd Bridges had minor uncredited parts in movies titled Freshman Love and Dancing Feet all in 1936. He made his first Broadway appearance the following year in a short-lived creation of Shakespeare's Othello, which starred Walter Houston and Brian Ahern, with Lloyd Bridges as part of the ensemble. Very visionary and ambitious Bridges was performing in Osining, New York, when an executive from Columbia Pictures spotted him and was impressed by his talent. With the stock company at Columbia Pictures, Bridges was doing great as he was placed on a $75 weekly pay, mainly for his minor roles in features and brief subjects productions. One thing leads to another. The very energetic young man got himself a seven-year contract with the studio, where he made his screen debut in 1941's The Lone Wolf Takes a Chance. Poised for greatness, Lloyd was more than eager to put his best foot forward, as he worked tirelessly with his employers, doing a staggering number of films in different genres. Those early movies did not provide him with the right platform to fully exploit his potential, not with his craggy features and poor renditions. Nevertheless, Lloyd was a go-to for second and third string muscle in westerns, gangster and war films, as he perfectly depicted in Humphrey Bogart's film Sahara in 1943. With the way his career was going at this time, it was almost certain he would not continue with the studio because within himself, Lloyd knew that he had more to offer than the roles he was doing. It's this unsatisfaction that Lloyd was complaining about when years later he remembered how he was relegated to the background because those he worked with did not think he was good enough for certain roles other than the ones he was doing. I didn't have enough maturity for a leading man. I looked too broad in the shoulders, he recalled, why they never made him a star performer. Lloyd added that it was difficult for him to go into Columbia Studio boss Harry Cohn's office, possibly to demand a better role. So he watched helplessly as, in his words, all the best roles went to Glenn Ford and William Holden, while they just put me in these awful B pictures, he lamented. I'm not sure I understand how Lloyd felt at the time, because one needs to pass through such a situation to be able to relate to the pains he had to go through. I even did a Three Stooges short, and many times I'd be in two or three movies a week. It was tough sledding, he had declared. It was only a matter of time before he left the studio, and as soon as most people would have expected, Bridges ended his contract with Columbia and had a brief engagement in the US Coast Guard as World War II rages. When that military stint ended, Lloyd returned to Hollywood for acting jobs and did a little freelancing for a few studios, played in Paramount's Miss Susie Slagle, Walter Wanger's Canyon Passage and briefly in Cecil B. DeMille's film Unconquered, before he landed his first lead role in the 1945 serial version of the famous comic strip Secret Agent X-9. The movie was put together by Dashiell Hammett and Alex Raymond for Universal. The studio loved what they got from Lloyd and subsequently billed him again for Strange Confession. Then his roles and the kind of films he did improved rapidly. Fans saw him in action in the World War II drama A Walk in the Sun, before that of André de Toth's western play Ramrod. It was at this time that Bridges got his career breakthrough role in Home of the Brave, appearing as the one and only Caucasian pal to African-American soldier James Edwards. The success of that movie saw him assume the leading man status that it eluded him for some time, as more hit movies followed. Remarkably, the western classic High Noon, with Bridges as Gary Cooper's deputy, who took a bow amidst intense showdown with daredevil criminals. The road to greatness, they say, comes with lots of obstacles, and for talented Lloyd Bridges, the story is not different because he had to fight his way through several hitches to get to the apex of his career. One of the pronounced obstacles that Lloyd faced was the probe by the then Un-American Activities Commission that investigated persons within the entertainment industry with a connection with the communist ideology. That era interestingly impacted negatively on Lloyd's career progress and slowed his momentum. 
While answering questions from the panel, he testified before the Commission that though he had been a member of the Actors' Lab, a theatre faction fingered for its ties to the Communist Party, the Communist concept meant nothing to him. Luckily for him, Lloyd was finally cleared by the FBI after renouncing his membership and possibly serving as a helpful witness in the investigation. Some sources say he was grey-listed, a situation that prevented him from doing certain kinds of movie duties, restricting him to low-budget features and television jobs. Observers say that it is the same reason he appeared to have achieved his greatest success in television shows. As for his TV roles, Bridges made his first TV appearance in Man's First Debt at the Bigelow Theatre in 1951. The road was smooth and inspiring as more juicy roles followed. Bridges rose to the apex of his career stardom in wide recognition, appearing as the lead character, Mike Nelson, in the television string Sea Hunt, as I said earlier, produced by Ivan Tors. The series ran in syndication from 1958, ending in 1961. When the networks refused the series because they thought it was too limited in scope, Ivan Tors decided to go for syndication a year later. Not too long, the table turned as it drew even bigger ratings than the available network shows and had about 156 episodes. It is quite interesting that he carried his sons along in that production as if it is a family affair, but more touching is the fact that Lloyd appeared with his grandson Dylan Bridges in a 1995 episode of The Outer Limits. His talent in comedy was also obvious as he cemented his later career in style that outing in Airplane. What about Lloyd Bridges' private life? He was such a fine gentleman and trusted family man. He met his wife, Dorothy Bridges, niece Simpson, back in the heyday. Reports say that the couple may have been members of the same fraternity at the time, as facts suggest they met each other in their common association and fell in love. Sometime in 1938 they were married in New York City. At the time Lloyd was still a struggling young man, who was just trying to make ends meet and augmenting his income working as a tutor, teaching theatrical courses at Cherry Lawn School. Young and beautiful Dorothy was also working as a tutor. It was within this period that Bridges, unfortunately, got himself mixed up with the alleged radical theatre group famously known as Actors Laboratory. A deep into history revealed that the said group may have been involved in unfriendly social activities the reason the American state viewed their movements as a threat to social justice. His association with the group later put him into trouble during Senator Joseph McCarthy's Red Scare campaign, or rather trials, of the 1950s. Lloyd and Dorothy and their three survived awesome children, the likes of Beau Bridges, Jeff Bridges and a daughter Lucinda Louise Bridges, were an example of a happy home. The fourth child, Garrett Bridges, was said to have died of sudden infant death syndrome sometime in 1948, sending the young family into mourning. Lloyd took his family along in his profession, and even his third generation continued in that line, because I heard actor Jordan Bridges is Beau's son, and of course Lloyd's grandson. The couple was together for such a long time. It was a pull of fanfare, I still recall, some years back, when Dorothy and Lloyd celebrated their Golden Jubilee occasion. They exchanged vows again for that remarkable 50th wedding anniversary. The couple was married for almost 60 years. Lloyd's creativity extended beyond his acting career because I heard he also co-authored a book about skin-diving titled Mask and Flippers. Lloyd Bridges and his wife also committed their time to social causes, remarkably towards world hunger and the environment. Sometime in 1988, he supervised a care mission on hunger in sub-Saharan Africa, a vocation he reliably managed and received accolades. In the spirit of appreciation, I heard that Bridges received UCLA's Ralph Bunch Peace Award. Although the actor did not win an Academy Award, an international media analyst had this to say about this brave gentleman. Bridges succeeded where so many actors fail. He was hardly ever out of work. Lloyd is viewed as one of those who survived an early brush with fame in infancy. Records show that President William Howard Taft gave him a trophy for being the fattest baby in America at birth. 
When the news of Lloyd Bridge's demise came on the 10th of March 1998, fans, friends and family thought that humanity had lost a genius. He died of natural causes at the age of 85, as officially reported, although the actor had to battle with a heart condition since 1992. Those who worked with Lloyd would describe him as a perfect gentleman that would not be forgotten in a hurry, especially for raising a patriarch of a three, talking about generation family of actors. His kids are happy to have a father like Lloyd because they all feel blessed to have him keep the family together until his call to glory. After diving into the remarkable life of Lloyd Bridges, we're about to expose a shocking story that will leave you speechless. Discover the unbelievable truth behind Jill Ireland's heartbreaking experience with an adoption scam. <laughs> 